Hey everybody, this is Nell Thames with Stamp with Nell. I'm hoping you're seeing us live because I'm not seeing myself on Facebook. Um, but <laughs> I don't know, this Facebook thing, I'm not, I know I'm not the only one who has issues with it, but boy, it's a little frustrating. Um, so if this isn't live, you will see it. Um, I can post it to Facebook later and then I will, um, it will be on YouTube. This card is actually for the blog hop on Thursday. I like to do the video on my blog hop cards. So our theme is snow. And as you can tell, um, maybe you can't, maybe I'm a little far away. As you can tell, we have some, um, some snow here. This is the Abundant Beauty mask, um, which has snowflakes in it. Um, they're currently unavailable, but we're, because just by the uh, mere fact that it shows up on um, the inventory um, when you search it, it should be back. So as long as it's there and says currently unavailable, it should be back. This is the Snowflake um, Snowflake Sky 3D embossing folder on vellum. And this beautiful paper I have had and um, I have not used it. And it is beautiful. It is the, let me bring it out and show you. It is the 20. 2325 um, in color luster specialty paper. And so this is wild wheat. Um, you can tell I obviously was cutting out of this one, but I don't know if you can see the sheen. It's on both sides. Um, I have something stuck to that, but this is Pebbled Path. Um, and again, really just really pretty. Um, this one is the uh, boho blue. I knew that. I don't know why I'm looking at the thing. Um, wild wheat, of course, copper clay, which just is just stunning. I mean, I just love this color anyway. And then in a luster paper and then moody moth, which I don't play with very much. I actually just ordered. Thank you, David. I actually, oh, I see it now. I actually just, we just see now, now we see ourselves live. So that's good. I'm, I'm pleased to see that it is actually live. Um, I'm sorry for interrupting myself, but Moody Mob, don't play with it often enough, but I did just order, um, I have the paper, I, I did just order um, some other things that I was missing, like stamp and blends and whatnot, so we'll see if we can give Moody Mob some due time, but not today. So I am going to take this piece out, because we will need it. As you saw, we are going to make this, things are falling, this beautiful angel, um, out of the country bouquet stamp. So here's the, the, um, you can kind of see that and the glare is not even totally that bad. Um, so here's the stamp as hearts and, um, leaves, two hearts and leaves. And then here is the stamp as an angel. So I just think she's pretty. Um, I have my angel wings out further today. I think we're going to make them more like this where it's, they're, they're down a little bit, um, down a little bit. Um, and then our sentiment is, he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So that is, um, and we've done, I've done that in, you can't see that. There we go. Silver. There we go. Um, it's, it's in silver, so it is quite shiny and a little bit a challenge to see on camera, but I see now that um, you can see it now. So we're going to make this, and this is the beautiful, you know what, what is my paper called? It's beautiful. I, I have a, a wholly unopened pack of it, and I'm using a, oh, here it is, the Oh Holy Night DSP. Um, so, um, and this is just, I have, um, okay, I'm going to pull this out, and we'll talk about this right now. Um, I have a product share of this that I got um, in, when this first came out, so I probably got it in September, and um, I'm still working off of this just because I haven't used it very much. And so I want to talk to you just briefly. I'm just going to mention that there is a new catalog coming out in January. I'm sorry for the glare. There is a new catalog, a mini catalog coming in January. It's the January through April 2024 mini catalog. It will have, thank you, David. It will have um, celebration items in it for um, available um, for free during the celebration period of January through February 2024. Um, but so what I'm telling, what I'm trying to get to is that I will be offering product shares, which are um, shares of paper and embellishments um, that you buy a, a portion of. So instead of going out and buying all of the paper for yourself, you're going to get 
um, 12 sheets of every paper that's in the um, 12 sheets of each paper that is that is available in the catalog and then you'll get some free cel celebration papers with that. You can also get a share, um, so a portion of embellishments. All of that information is on my blog. If you go to my blog and search product shares, you will find this. It's the November 25th blog and money is not even due for that until the end of December. But I would love it if you are interested in a product share, if you would go to my blog and check that out. Okay, that is my product share information. So let's talk about the products we're using. We are using the Oh Holy Night DSP. We are using the Night Divine stamp set, just the um, um, sentiments. We are using the Abundant Beauty Decorative Masks. We're using the Snowflake version. We're using Deckled Circle dies. If you don't have these yet, I highly recommend you get them. The, I, the last time I saw, they might actually be, <laughs> they might actually be out of stock, but that does not mean they're unavailable. They're just unavailable now. They will be coming back. Um, and then we're going to use some um, thick basic white, a white envelope, some starry sky, and then of course the wild wheat luster paper and somewhere in here, probably hiding from me because I can't see it. There it is, is a piece of vellum. We, I did decide to um, go ahead and cut on camera today and emboss on camera. So that should be interesting. I'm sorry for all the, the noise over here. I'm trying to get everything out of my basket. Okay, so let me go ahead and get started. I've already cut my basic white, my thick basic white to the card um, the card base size, which is five and a half by, whoa, sorry about that. I see that everything has shifted on me. Um, five and a half by eight and a half. And we're going to fold, just simply fold that in half. And then um, I'll get my bone folder if I can find it. There it is. I don't know about you, but I was never a real bone folder person. And then all of a sudden, once I started using it, I thought, whoa, I don't know why I didn't use that before. All right, so we're going to cut two pieces of uh, Starry Sky. I need a piece for the front, the, um, the front of the card, which is going to be five and a quarter by four. And so that's going to fit right on top of here. And then I need another one inside. This one I want slightly larger. Since I cut that one so oddly, I guess I didn't plan ahead here. Um, so this one I want to be um, five and three eighths. And I, I happen to be a fan of eighths. I find that on the, the trimmer, it's actually very easy to find. This is five and a half. This is five and three eighths. I, um, so, and then by four and an eighth. Uh, and that's going to be for the inside layer. We're going to have an inside layer. Um, we are also, I moved my um, cardstock around today. I moved my white from um, W, because I, I file them alphabetically, to, this is, I'm not sure this is basic white, hold on a minute, um, from the, the end of my alphabet to the um, beginning and put it under basic white. So now, I uh, it's I have to think about where I actually put it. So this one is five and a quarter by four. So it will fit with a very narrow border here. And this is for our inside anyway. So we'll just put this off to the side. I think that is all for the actual cutting. So we'll put the trimmer away. Um, now we're going to do the, um, we're going to use white um, pigment ink. Now remember that this sits on top of your cardstock, and um, so it doesn't soak in like the others do. So we're going to be we're going to need to allow it a little bit of extra time to um, to dry. You can dry it with your heating tool. I'm going to try not to do that. I'd like to just let it dry on its own while we do some other things, but we might have to we might have to do something. So um, I prefer to use. Well, let's use um, 
I, I prefer to hold my mask down with something so that it doesn't shift on me. So I'm going to use um, some post-it notes and I'm using post-it notes only because um, tape would stick to my paper and I prefer that not happen. So I'm just kind of draping my post-it notes here. I'm hoping that it's not going to be bad on the bottom. So this seems to me to take a lot more ink because it's not, you know, it, it's, um, this is a much thicker ink than the others. So we're going to, I'm going to get another post-it note so I don't put my hands in the ink. Um, so we're going to just um, fill our, and I realize this is not a Stampin' Up! Um, blending brush, but we're going to use it because it's what I have. And I have designated um, one brush for white. I don't use this for anything but white because, um, because of the difference in inks. So um, we are, I am going to just simply brush this on and make some, um, make some snowflakes. Um, and I'm kind of scooping it a little bit. I'm un unlike when I would do this with um, other inks, I am not worried about big blotchiness because I don't think that happens with the white in my experience. It doesn't happen with the white. That doesn't mean it doesn't for others, but for me, it doesn't happen with the white. Um, it looks like nothing is happening, but I promise you when we lift it that there will be some, um, there will be some changes. There we go. You can kind of see that changed from blue to white. And we're not trying to make the paper white necessarily. We're just trying to get a snowflake on there. So we're not trying to make it bright white and shiny white. That would be, if we were going to do that, we would use Versamark and um, emboss, heat emboss it. So my goal is just simply to get this um, white ink on here and um, make some snowflakes. All right. I think we have managed to get, except for this one little one up here, we have managed to get them all. All right. So now we'll just, um, we're going to hope we did because since I didn't, yeah, just fine. Okay, so there's our reveal. We have some light ones. We have some some brighter ones. I like that. I, I don't want them all to be the same because to me, everything being the same is boring. So I'm going to put this off to the side and let it dry for just a little bit. Let's close this up because, you know, I'll put my hand in it if I don't close it up. We'll put that off. We are done with the white ink. So I'm going to put this off to the side and we're going to bring out the... Um, bring out the embossing fold folder. So the um, Snowflake Sky 3D embossing folder. And um, this is still available. In fact, this is carrying over from the, um, the September to December mini catalog. This is carrying over. So you do not need to run, um, worry about it going out of stock as a retirement sale. Let me find my vellum. It's right here. And I'm hoping this is big enough for the deckled circle I chose. So we're going to use this um, deckled circle. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoa, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it's number seven from the center. Um, I start counting at the center. And so it does, the, the size doesn't matter as much if you want it larger or smaller, feel free. Um, and so we're going to run this through. I brought out the big machine. <coughs> I had it right here. Oh, there it is. I brought out the big machine because um, because this is, I was afraid this would be too wide, the deckled circle. Um, I can't remember when I did it on my own if I, if I use the mini or not. I have both. I tend to use the mini um, as often as I can. So. And just for you all, I have a brand new top plate. So you can see, you don't have to look at my grungy plate that I use when I, for myself. So, um, you know, it's funny when I, because I'm used to, oops, we don't need this one. All right. So my sandwich is, um, this is the first plate here. This is plate number one. This is plate number two. And you can see the numbers right here. Let me turn it this way so you can see it. So here's one. Here's two, 
And then I have two threes. This three is going on the bottom. And the fact that it's upside down doesn't really matter. In fact, mine's a little bit bowed. And so I'm, you know, constantly trying to make it a little bit square. And then here's my, um, here's my new number three that you can see through. And you can see how shiny it is. So I'm just going to lay this on, lay the deckled rectangle and the vellum on top. And I'm going to run this through the machine. Oh, I kind of like the crack, <laughs> except then I wonder, you know, is that my plate? No, it's not. Although I have cracked a plate, but that was totally my fault and not for the big machine. That was for the little machine. I put it through kind of sideways. I don't know how I did it, but it cracked the, cracked the plate. Totally my fault. Um, so now we are going to use, um, so we'll put this circle away. Now we're going to emboss the use the um, snowflake sky 3d embossing folder and we're going to just lay the top of the embossing folder is the one that has the stampin up whoops you can't see that stampin up logo that's the problem with all this stuff on the table here so i'm going to put this face up and the folder edge goes in now before i do this i have to remove plate number two and I'm going to bring in just plate number four. Because this is a 3D folder, um, I just need numbers one and four. And it's not challenging to turn it. This, this particular one is not challenging. Sometimes I find there are some really ornate um, 3D folders, and they're a little more challenging. But this one was quite easy. All right. So here we go. So this is what we get. We Now we have the, the snowflakes on our... Um, on our vellum. Hmm. We're going to have to go searching for that die that I just dropped. Okay. Um, I think we're done with that. <coughs> All right. So there's that's me embossing on camera. Yeah, David found it. I, I figured it would just be right there. Did you get it? Thank you. Right here. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to have a, a helper in the craft room who will go after your dies when you drop them. Because usually that means I can't find them. Okay, so I'm going to assume this is dry, and it is. Um, it's not coming off on my hands, so it'll be just fine. So I am going to decide which way I want this to lay. Um, and I'm going to lay it, yeah. Um, I can feel that the snowflakes are um, embossed, so they're risen. They're, yeah, risen. <laughs> it's kind of like a little bit of Braille there. And um, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I, my, my mother and I recently had a discussion about saying the word um, um and it, she said it's a placeholder, and I just, every time I say it now, I, I feel like, because that was my complaint, was I was saying um too often, I am going to punch my angel using the country bouquet punch. Now, you might have gotten this around uh, when, around Valentine's Day last year, that it, came with really beautiful paper, not came with, but you could also purchase really beautiful paper. Um, and I, I really love it. And I was looking for another reason to, another way to use it. So that is how this came about. Now, one thing about this luster paper is it is, um, it is luster on both sides. So you can decide which way you wish for this to lay. And I'm going to lay it this on the on the vellum and I'm going to this time put her arms down a bit or her wings down a little bit more. Okay. I think I'm, I think I like that better. <coughs> Excuse me. This always happens on video days. I need to drink more and it's, it's hard to drink and talk at the same time. All right. So one thing I don't like about this is she's really covering that, um, Snowflake, so I'm going to turn it just a little bit so she, so the snowflake is out of the way of my angel. So if you don't know this, I think I said it last week, but I am a Christmas baby. So my grandmother, when I was, um, I was the first grandchild on my mom's side, and I um, used to receive an angel every year for my birthday from her. Um, and sadly, I don't have those anymore um, and it makes you know it's one of those decisions you make as a young adult you like oh I don't need all these things and the sentimentality of them wasn't you know so anyway anyway but this makes me think of her to have to have these angels 
um, or to have this, this angel this year. So I am going to use half dimensionals to assemble the angel. This is her head, of course. I'm gonna move her up just, you know what? If I move her up, oh, it's too late now. I've already put it on. We're gonna lose that, um, <clears throat> that snowflake again. That's all right. It'll be fine, right? Isn't that what we say? It's not, an, it's not a mistake. It's just a creative opportunity. And then we will take out the you get to see my kind of messy desk there I see we're gonna move this up here I'll move your arms a bit all right so we're gonna put her body just right below her head and now yeah we're gonna lose that <coughs> excuse me just a single dimensional here will be fine on both wings And I want the, um, there's a rounded edge and a pointed edge to the wing. I want the rounded edge out. So that is, when I put these uh, on her, that is the way I will put them on, is with the rounded edge to the outside, therefore the pointed edge to her body. Okay. And there we go, covering that, um, did a perfect job of covering up that that snowflake that I was trying to preserve earlier. All right. So since um, this, I realize this is vellum, but we are going to put under the angel body, I am going to put some stamp and seal, which is not going to work right now. I'm sorry. Let's, I must have used, let's use glue because, you know, glue is in fact my, there we go, my adhesive of choice. And that was a bit of a blob of glue that I'm trying to now spread around. I am trying to keep this under the angel body so that she is not so that the vellum does not show the glue and i don't mind that these edges will they won't pull up but i don't mind that they're loose i will just be aware of that when i go to put it in the envelope all right now we're going to use we're going to come back here to our folded card front because it's wise to fold it in my opinion, I fold as soon as I create it. I've heard that not everyone does that. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> All right. And then, um, okay, so here we go. We're just going to put, I personally like, I'm sorry for I, the half dimensionals. I personally like nine dimensionals. I do not know why that is my number, but it is my number at least nine. Um, sometimes I find that I need, I want more than that. So there's that. Okay. And this is going slower than I expected. There we go. There we go. All right. You know what? We're going for 10. All right. And so now we'll just take off, you know, I don't take them off with my nails because I have none. I keep meaning to say this, I have a scar on my hand. It's fairly recent. It's, um, I, I have started baking bread, my own bread recently. Um, and at, there is a, um, with sourdough bread, that's what I'm baking, you get some discard. And so I was making a pizza and you have to heat up the oven at 430 um, degrees with a, um, I use a, a, I think it's called a seal in the oven um, for 40 minutes. And so when I went to put my hand in there to, to adjust whatever it was I was adjusting, um, I really burned the heck out of my hand. And this has been a couple of months now, and I, I had thought it would go away, but it is not going to go away. It is going to be one of those permanent badges of honor, right? So anyway, um, <clears throat> so there she is. Now, the only thing we're going to add to the front here is the iridescent pearl that I know I took out and I have with me probably in my bin of fun things. I have a bin of fun things over here and if there they are hiding way at the bottom. Okay so iridescent pearls basic jewels just because she is in fact an angel she should be pearly right in my opinion she should be pearly. 
um, a large one over, I don't know where we put it before, so we're just going to put it right here this time. And then there's, it comes in two sizes, lar um, large and small. I'm sure there's an actual measurement, but it's never on the back of the thing. You know, Stampin' Up! does a fantastic job <laughs> with color coordination, and they tell you all the colors on, on your DSP, on your Designer Series pa paper. They tell you all the colors that are in there. But then when it comes to their embellishments, I really wish they would tell me what color are my embellishments. These are clearly white, but they don't, they're not, I don't see the size on here. It's probably, a, oh, it, there it is. See, now I just complained and I shouldn't have. Three millimeter and four millimeter. So, um, and if you don't know this, you can slit the side of your, I think I've said this before, but you can slit the side of your envelope for your um, it, embellishments and just slide them in and out instead of dealing with the um, little, uh, adhesive tab here. I don't like the adhesive tab. It bothers me. Okay, so this piece is done. We're going to move this off to the side. We're going to work on the inside. Now we're not going to adhere this until we're done. So let me clean up my mess just a little bit. Oops, there goes the camera. So sorry. All right, and we are going to use Versamark and Silver Stampin' Emboss Powder. And I'm a huge fan embossing fan and not only do I like embossing folders I do like heat embossing and so I'm going to ink myself up very well in Versamark but before I touch anything I'm going to um, because you know that this is going to be the one where everything is going to stick all right we're going to use the embossing buddy and just wipe that down get all those fingerprints etc off and then I have my powder pal here. And so when it comes time, we're gonna use this. I'm gonna close up the, the Versamark. So here we go. All right, we're gonna hope that we get this on straight and centered the first time. And it, the, the location depends kind of on you. If you wanna write on here, you're gonna to wanna to push it towards the top. I am not planning on writing too much more than Love, Nell and David. And therefore, it's going to go right in the center, sorry, for the glare of the um, <clears throat> ring light. All right, you can't see this. I can see that it's a pretty good, um, I can see that it's a pretty good stamp. So I'm going to go ahead and go with it. I'm going to use the reversible tweezers because they're my friend, especially when it comes to heat embossing. All right, we're going to try to keep this up here. I love this powder pal. It took me a while to get used to it. Um, at first, I thought, oh, that's kind of a bummer because I can never get the powder out of there. But then I started using a, a the little brush that comes with it to get the powder out. I'm going to take this off for just a second and go ahead and stamp and get this. I'm a little bit messy with it. It is what it is. But the good news is, as I look at this, I don't see, and I don't know if you can see, um, I don't see, other than down here, a lot of extraneous powder. Thank you. Um, so we're going to push this off to the side. Um, I will replace it later, but I'm not going to do that while you're waiting on me. Um, and I do have a little bit of powder here, so let me grab my... I have a Swiffer, I just, this little Swiffer duster thing. And then here's my heat tool. So we're just gonna turn that on. Okay. And um, I'm gonna see more powder here. We're gonna turn on the heat tool, let it warm up for a little bit because you don't wanna use it dry. I mean, um, cold, because it will, or it can warp your paper. It's going to warp your paper anyway a little bit, but, it's, um, we're going to use it and see if you can see it, see the magic happen. See, I can see it warping my paper right there. Um, I don't worry about that because I'm going to glue it all down. So can you see the magic happening here at the E? Um, or we're at peace. Oh, I see some stuff, some extraneous stuff there. I should have gotten rid of that. That's fine. I have, I'm a, I love the embossing. I've never been fantastic at it. I always have little bits, but I don't, I don't worry about them. I'm, um, it's not, 
it doesn't ruin the card for me. If it ruins the card for you, then make sure they're not there. Um, you know, get off all, everything you can, but there's, I always find little extraneous bits. Um, so you don't want to, there we go. Thank you. Um, you don't want to do that for too long. You don't want to burn. I'm trying to decide if this is finished. I think it's not David. Can I have that back? Um, you don't want to burn your um, embossing powder by doing it for too long, but I think my top is not finished. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Yeah, it's just that one little corner wasn't done. Thank you so much. All right. So now I will let this cool just a little bit. Dun, da, 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 da. We're all going to let it cool. Um, and this one I will put on with... Um, <clears throat> stamp and seal because um, now others have told me this is not accurate, but I, this is how I learned it. And therefore I believe it. It's kind of like, you know, Santa is real because that's what my parents told me. Um, and so I put, I use seal or seal plus. This is seal plus um, on my insert, my interior panels. Just the panel I'm going to write on. I'm not worried about the other one. And this is uh, because I am very generous with my glue. And that means, as we saw earlier with the um, glop of glue that came out on that poor little angel's back. Um, and so, um, I don't know if you can see this. I'm struggling to keep this very narrow border very narrow on both sides. Um, and so... I find that it's best just to just to use the seal. Just I'm really struggling today with the narrowness of my border. Oh, it's gonna bug me. I know you can get this off, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull it off. I could pull it off with my heat gun. I'm just going to pretend it's not gonna bother me. That it's a little bit narrower on this side. And we're gonna pull out the lovely glue. Dun, da, 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 da. Um, and I am not great at, <laughs> I'm not great at, um, um, okay. And I put my glue everywhere. I put it on the edges and in the center. I draw a picture with it on the back of everything, which is another reason why I do not want to, um, that I don't want to use the glue on the back of the card that I'm going to write on or the, the, at least the, the layer that I'm going to write on. I don't mind putting it on the back of the other side, but I don't want to do it on the layer I'm going to write on. So there is our sentiment. You can see I have a few little dots there, but I'm not, they are not so bothersome to me. And that is the interior of the card. So now the card itself is done. And I think she's beautiful. I am quite partial to angels. So I think she's beautiful. We are going to make, um, you know, another interesting fact about us, da uh, David and I, is that my husband <clears throat> is a, um, he is a December 27th baby. He, his mother said he tried to be born on Christmas Day and decided, nope, not going to do it. But there is a, um, there is a photo of him um, getting a brand new bike on Christmas Day um, on the day, the year I was born. So he was, he was five years old. He got a brand new red bike, red bike, right, David? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, on the day I was born. So that's kind of fun. That's the, that's like probably the funnest part about having, um, Christmas as a birthday is when you look at things, when you find something like that, that birthday, that picture of David getting a new bike on Christmas day, I knew it was on the day I was born. So anyway, moving on. Um, I have chosen, I should probably trim this, huh? I'm afraid I'm going to dump the embossing folder, the embossing powder all over the place. Okay. So I, you know what, let's use this side because this side's pretty. Um, I have a bunch of choices here. I don't have the paper because the, the share, the product shares are six by six pieces of paper. Um, it's not a 12 by 12, which is what you would get if you bought the whole package. Um, so the six by six papers don't necessarily, you know, it, for this one, which is the one that I used, 
Hello, Marianne. Thanks for joining us today. Um, the six by six paper, I, I only get basically one cut out of that, one sheet out of it, depending on what I'm doing. Like this was the actual paper. It is no longer big enough to use for this particular project. So back to the glue, probably a little bit significant. I probably put a little bit too much glue on there. I think I'm trying to rush, so forgive me for rushing. I try not to rush because... So David bought these, um, he bought those Swiffer dusters and they're, they're lavender scented. Whew, they are strong. <laughs> they're enough to like give you, I mean, it's crazy. We have some lavender scented, um, oops. Um, so I was a little bit generous with my glue, as you saw. I am going to use the embossing butter to take away the stickiness there so that it does not stick to other people's mail because I would like this to get to where it's going. I'm going to use my snips to trim the paper. And that piece of paper is six inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall. And it gives me a very narrow border up here, but... Um, and I am not, you know, some of my, my friend Mary says, this is the world's easiest fussy cut. I need to practice patience on fussy cutting because that did not, it's, I'm not that great at it. All right, we'll get that little thing off there. <clears throat> okay, one last step is to, I feel like I missed a step somewhere, but I'm seeing everything on my table is what, where it's supposed to be. So this is copper clay ink. One of my favorite colors. Um, I was a little bit um, nervous about the um, color refresh, and I'm always a little bit nervous about what the in colors are coming out, but boy, this cup of clay is fantastic. I have chosen the Lord is my shepherd to stamp on my envelope, and so I just inked that up, stamped on the envelope, and that is it. We are done. This card is done and ready to send. Now, it's, we are 37 minutes into this and you could, if you're not talking the whole time, you could certainly make a, several of these and get them out this year for Christmas. Easy, easy. Um, there's, there's not a ton to do. You can, you can cut your, if you cut a strip like this, this strip I think is two and a quarter inches tall, two and a half inches. So this is two and a half inches tall and you can cut your angels out, um, you know, lickety split right down, right down the, the piece of paper and you have four right there ready to go. And then just cut out your paper, do your, um, you know, your inking all at the same time, just do everything kind of in an assembly line and it will be good. So, okay. So that is the, um, that is this card. I do want to show you a couple other cards that you may see coming up next week. Um, I did pull out the Notes of Nature, which is a brand new stamp set that's coming on in um, coming in January. This was the one that everybody oohed and awed over, and um, I've seen some gorgeous cards made from this. And I think these are two of them. This is a double gatefold, uh, and I well, here's so here's the thing that I think is so special about this. This is a faux a faux leather gold ribbon. Um, and this would be, this ribbon would be included in your product share. This, the paper, which is called Nature Sweetness, also six by 12, six by six pieces of paper in your product share. And um, this paper is also that same one. These um, embellishments here, the cork embellishments also would be, those would be included in the embellishment share. So there's two different shares, a paper share and an embellishment share. Um, the ribbon and the embellishments are together. And this, um, this is a, gatefold. But this, um, I love the fact that this can be fed through these, um, the, the die cuts here, there's holes and they actually go all the way across, but my sentiment kind of, um, covers it up. But here again, we have, you know, the, we have the ribbon going through the, the fold. Um, and that one's actually upside down. We have the ribbon going through the holes. Um, and I just thought it was stunning. So let's move it down just a tish. And then this is a really easy ribbon to tie uh, or yeah, ribbon to tie. So I do not recall the name of this particular fun fold, but um, it's 
you know, I just love this piece right here. And these here, I actually, I, I chose instead of using the cork embellishments or any other kind of embellishments, I chose to use the, um, just cut out some, some circles using this punch out of gold. And um, so that's what I use there. Not, it, you know, it's a design choice. It's, I think it's nice. So there we go. So that's, you may see those on the blog coming up next week. Um, the things that I made this week, almost everything I mailed already. So I'm sorry I don't have those for, to show you, but I'll let you go. This is going to be an, uh, a quick, quick video today. If you are interested in any of the products that you saw today or any products from Stampin' Up, um, keep in mind the last chance sale is going on right now for the September through um, December mini catalog. If you look on my blog, you'll see what's retiring and what you should buy now instead of wait because it will they will sell out. Um, if you'd use my host code, the host code is the V2HA4EN2. If you'd use that and you spend more than $50, I'll send you a $10 gift of your choosing. Um, if you are going to spend $150, don't use that code. You'll still get my gift, but you'll also get um, rewards from Stampin' Up. So um, I think that's it for now. If you're looking for instructions for this, they will be available on my blog on Thursday. Um, the video will also be re put, uh, put up on Thursday. So if you are watching, a, if you're a replay viewer and watching on YouTube, if you would subscribe and set your notifications to all so that you will get notified every time I go live, on, or every time a new video is posted on YouTube, um, and if you are on YouTube and you want to see the videos live, please come over to Facebook at Stamp with Nell. That's one L to um, see the to see the videos live. I, we go live every Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Time. So that's it for me for tonight. Thank you so much, Marianne. Thanks for stopping by. And, and um, for my replay viewers, thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you check out the instructions and have a great week.